We have come together to witness the promises of Patrick Ryan Gleason and Morgan Whitney Malone to share with them in their happiness and in their hopes for the future. Marriage involves caring and giving. It involves learning to share one's life with another person, forgiving as Christ forgives. Enjoying the love and meaning which can be found together. It involves facing together whatever adversity may arise. Here before God, Patrick and Morgan wish to pledge their love for each other and their desire to spend their lives together. Patrick and Morgan, we welcome you. We are glad to join with you in the celebration of this marriage to witness your vows, to pray with you, and to wish you joy in your life together. Let us pray. God, touch us with an awareness of your presence in all the world around us. Awaken in us a sense of wonder that you have created us in love. As we celebrate the marriage of Morgan and Patrick, deepen our love for those close to us. And for those who, all those strangers, need our concern. Help Patrick and Morgan as they commit themselves to each other and grant us all a heightened sense of joy in life because we share this moment with them. Amen. Morgan, <laughs> will you take Patrick to be your husband? Will you share his joys and ease his burdens? Will you be honest with him and be faithful to him always as long as you both will live? I will with the help of God. And Patrick, will you take Morgan to be your wife? Will you share her joys and ease her burdens? Will you be honest with her, be faithful to her always as long as you both live? Repeat, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Parents, are you willing to strengthen this marriage by, by upholding Patrick and Morgan with your love and concern? Respond with, we are. All the friends and families here today, will you, will you, friends and family, do all in your power to support this couple now and the years ahead? And please respond, we will. At this moment, I'd like to invite Patrick's cousin, Patricia Schulte, to read um, 
a um, writing about marriage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> marriage is ugly. You see the absolute worst in someone. You see them when they're mad, sad, being stubborn, when they're so unlovable they make you scream. But you also get to see them when they are laughing so hard they cry. You see them at 3 a.m. when the world is asleep, except for the two of you, and you are eating in the middle of the kitchen floor. You get to see the side of them that no one else does, except for the t And it's not always pretty. Snorting, farting, bedhead, bad breath, random dancing, anger, and joy. Marriage is not beautiful, but it is amazing. It's knowing that someone loves you so much that they won't leave you, even when you said something really nasty. It's knowing that they have your back, no matter what. Fights over stupid things, like not doing the dishes or picking up after themselves. It's those nights you fall asleep in each other's arms, feeling like there will never be enough time with them. It's cleaning up their throw up or just rubbing their back when they're sick. It's the dirtiest, hardest, most rewarding job there is. Because at the end of the day, you get to crawl into bed with your best friend. The weirdest, most annoying, loving, goofy, perfect person that you know. Marriage is not beautiful, but it's one heaven override. Thank you. Uh, this evening's scripture is a favorite of the brides. It's from 1 Corinthians. I'm going to read 4 through 8 and verse 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love is not arrogant or proud. It does not act unseemly. It is not self-seeking, not easily provoked. It does not dwell in evil. It does not rejoice in injustice, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, has faith in all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And so it is that faith, hope, and love live and dwell within us, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Holy ukulele. I love the music. And it's put me in such a very happy mood. But I'm actually most happy because of you two getting married. And what a wonderful day for a wedding. And a, what, a, what a wonderful and beautiful location, right? It's a significant and beautiful ritual, a wedding, intentionally, publicly declaring your love for each other, openly admitting your dreams, expectations, and asking for the support of your loved ones as you make your vows. A wedding ceremony is kind of a threshold or a, a liminal experience. Your life consists of all these people and the places and events that help to make up who you are as an individual and also who you are as a couple, and all that you bring with you, and you're here right now to enter this portal, this new era of your lives together, hand in hand, on a new journey. Morgan, I've known you since you were a twinkle in your mom and dad's eye. And I remember the first time I met you, you were this teeny little baby. And I remember that your brother, Matt, said, Aunt Kathy, 
They call me Aunt Kathy. I'm really a cousin. So you're not holding her right. <laughs> you need to do it this way because nobody was going to mess with his baby sister. So, Pat, <laughs> you made it through the Matt Malone seal of approval. Good job. Quite an accomplishment. Not easy. And Morgan, I remember the trips that we made as a family to American Girl. And I remember the gymnastic routines in your mom and dad's living room and you trying to teach Megan. Good times, good times. And Pat, I was trying to remember the first time we met, but I think it was at a Christmas day at Cindy and Rick's um, about five years ago. And I remember thinking how impressed I was with you. One, because you could talk about just any topic. You're so well versed in so many things. I was impressed with your profession and all your accomplishments. Most importantly, I was and am impressed by how you love Morgan and how Morgan loves you. I know that you and Morgan first met through a mutual friend when she was a senior in high school and you were a college, in college at U of I, go Illini and Fontbonne. You started out as friends, which in my, thing, my opinion is, is that's a good place to start. Friendship is always a good foundation for a marriage. And here we are. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love is not arrogant or proud. So I asked Pat and Morgan to email me some things that they love about each other. Pat wrote, I love that Morgan loves cupcakes, sour beers, and hanging with my knife friends. I'm not sure what a knife friend is, but <laughs> kudos, Morgan. <laughs> she supports me in everything I want to try, every single one of my crazy ideas. And Morgan writes, I love that Pat supports me in every single idea that I bring to him that I might want to try. Like she does incredible cups and tumblers, if you've not noticed. She continues by saying that even if Pat thinks it's maybe a bad idea or she might not succeed, he's there for her, success or failure. And Pat, you can never, ever shave the beard. She loves the beard. That's a hard line in the sand. And we're surrounded by sand, so you can't. So I believe that love is expressed in so many ways and nurturing each other's creativity and dreams is a wonderful example of loving each other. Love is not inflated with its own importance. It does not behave gracelessly. It does not insist on its rights. God-centered love, by its nature, elicits a desire to hope the best for and of each other. And Morgan and Pat's relationship bears witness to this love. A friend of mine, used a poem in her wedding ceremony that I think eloquently paraphrases Paul's thoughts about a selfless and God-centered love. The poem is entitled Spectrum of Love. For me to love is to commit myself freely and without reservation, as I am sincerely interested in your happiness and well-being. Whatever your needs are, I will try to fulfill them and will bend in my values depending upon the importance of your need. Love does not store up the memory of any wrongdoing it has received. Love finds no pleasure in evil doing. May love always be the basis of your lives together. However, being human beings, we come with our own agendas and sets of quirks. I know because I'm quite quirky. So some of these quirks are well known to our partner and ourselves and others are so obscure that we're even surprised when something comes out of our mouths, perhaps a thought or resentment that we didn't know existed within us until we heard ourselves say aloud what was going on in our minds. We're very complicated people and we're very wonderfully made. All sorts of things will test your commitment to your love. And I think there's nothing wrong with having disagreements. As a matter of fact, I think it's healthy. 
Morgan, one of the things Pat says he likes about you, I don't know if you know this, but it's because you fight like a guy. <laughs> I wasn't sure what that meant at first, but he says that you tell him what you think and feel in real time without holding a grudge and bottling up feelings. Love rejoices with the truth. Love can endure anything. Love is completely trusting. The accumulation of hurts and disappointments that we've received in our lives make it difficult at times for us to trust or be trustworthy. But love and God's love can heal our hurts, helping us to be trusting again. Love never ceases to hope. It bears everything with triumphant fortitude. The Apostle Paul has listed 15 characteristics of Christian love in the 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. But he concludes that no matter how great your faith in something may be, or your hope for something to occur, love is still greater. Faith without love is cold, and hope without love is grim. Love is the fire which kindles faith, and love is the light which turns hope into certainty. Pat and Morgan, may you always be blessed with the gift of love. Now we'll have Morgan take our hand. And Pat, you take Morgan's hand. And you repeat after me. Morgan, I take you to be my wife. Morgan, I take you to be my wife. To be with you, whatever happens to us. In prosperity and hardship. In health and sickness, in sorrow and in joy, I will love, protect and serve you as long as we live. This I vow before God. Patrick, I take you to be my husband, to be with you whatever happens to us. Prosperity and hardship. In health and in sickness. In sorrow and in joy. In sorrow and in joy. I will love, I will love protect, and serve you. As long as we live. As long as we live. This, I vow this I vow before God. Eternal God, bless these rings as symbols of love and trust between Patrick and Morgan. This ring is a token of my faithfulness and love. And a symbol that I have, that all I have. And a symbol of all that I have I share with you. This ring is a token of my faithfulness and love. And a symbol that I have, that all I have. And a symbol that all I have I share with you. Patrick and Morgan, <laughs> you have declared the love you have for each other and your hopes for the future, and you have made promises to each other and have symbolized them by joining hands and giving rings. You are now husband and wife. May God's May God give you light to guide you and love to unite you so that you may be faithful to the vows you have made this day and live together in joy and peace forever. And the blessing of God, creator, savior, and giver of life be with all of you now and forever. Amen. Will you please join me in welcoming and celebrating the marriage 
of Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Gleason.